We're starting at the top of page 207. Make sure you have your notes or your book with you so you can annotate and be looking for all the parts of the fiction genre-based thinking job, C-S-E-R-T. Papa reached into the tree and broke off a twig. We can't just stop taking care of business because of them Wallace's, Mary. You know that. Mama did not reply. Papa leaned against the tree. I think I'll take Stacy with me. Now, David, no. He'll be 13 next month, honey, and he needs to be with me more. I can't take him with me on the railroad, but I can take him with me where I go around here. And I want him to know business, how to take care of it, how to take care of things when I ain't around. David, he's just a boy. Baby, a boy get as big as Stacy down here, and he's near a man. He's got to know a man's things. He's got to know how to handle himself. I know, but, Mary, I want him strong, not a fool like TJ. He's got more brains and learning than that, Mama snapped. I know, Papa said quietly. Still, it worries me, seeing TJ turning like he is. Seems to me it isn't bothering Joe Avery much. He doesn't seem to be doing anything about it. Papa allowed the silence to seep between them before he said, It's not like you, honey, to be bitter. I'm not bitter, said Mama, folding her arms across her chest. It's just that that boy's gotten out of hand. It doesn't seem like anybody's doing anything about it. The other day, Joe told me he couldn't do nothing with TJ anymore. That's a hard thing for a man to admit. He can still put a good strip of leather against his bottom, can he? It was clear that Mama was unsympathetic to Mr. Avery's problem. Said he tried, but his health so poor he ended up with a bad coughing spell. Got so sick from it he had to go to bed. Said after that, Fanny tried to whip the boy, but TJ's stronger than her and it didn't do no good. Papa paused and added, He's gotten pretty sassy too, I understand. Well, sassy or not, Mama grumbled, they better figure out some way of getting that boy back on the right track because he's headed for a whole lot of trouble. Papa sighed heavily and left the tree. We better go in. I've got to get an early start if I'm going to get round to everybody. You're still set on going to Vicksburg? I told you I was. Mama laughed lightly in exasperation. Sometimes, David Logan, I wonder why I didn't marry sweet, quiet Ronald Carter or nice, smiled Harold Davis. Because, woman, Papa said, putting his arm around her, you took one look at big, handsome me, and no one else would do. Then they both laughed and together moved slowly to the side of the house. Seven families, including ours, still refused to shop at the Wallace store, even with the threat of the chain gang. Mama said that the number was not significant enough to hurt the Wallaces, only enough to rile them, and she worried, afraid for Papa, Stacy, and Mr. Morrison to make the trip. But nothing she could say could change Papa's mind, and they left as planned on Wednesday morning long before dawn. On Thursday, when they were to return, it began to rain, a hard, swelling summer rain which brought a premature green darkness to the land and forced us to leave our hoeing of the cotton field and return to the house. As the thunder rumbled overhead, Mama peered out the window at the dark road. "'Wonder what's keeping them,' she said, more to herself than anyone else. "'Probably got held up someplace,' said Big Ma. "'Could have stopped to get out of the storm.' Mama turned from the window. "'You're most likely right,' she agreed, picking up a pair of Christopher John's pants to mend. As the evening fell into total darkness, we grew silent, the boys and I saying very little, Mama and Big Ma concentrating on their sewing, their brows furrowed. My throat grew, t grew tight, and without knowing why I was afraid, I was. Mama, I said, they all right, ain't they? Mama stared down at me. Of course they're all right. They're just late, that's all. But Mama, do you suppose maybe somebody done? I think you children better go on to bed, Mama said sharply without letting me finish. But I want to wait up for Papa, objected little man. Me too, said sleepy Christopher John. You'll see him in the morning, now get to bed. Since there was nothing we could do but obey, we went to bed, but I could not sleep. A cold fear crept up my body, churning my stomach and tightening its grip on my throat. Finally, when I felt that I was going to be sick from it, I rose and padded silently into Mama and Papa's room. Mama was standing with her back to me, her arms folded, and Big Ma was still patching. Neither one of them heard the door swing open. I started to speak, but Mama was talking, and I decided not to interrupt her. I've got a good mind to saddle lady and go looking for them, she said. Now, Mary, what good would that do, Big Ma questioned. You run round out there on that mare by yourself in this darkness and rain. But something's happened to them. I can feel it. 
It's just in your mind, child, Big Moth scoffed unconvincingly. Them men folks, all right. No, no, said Mama, shaking her head. The Wallaces aren't just in my mind. They, she stopped suddenly and stood very still. Mary? Thought I heard something. The dog started barking, and she turned, half running across the room. Pushing up the lock in a mad haste, she swung the door open and cried into the storm, David! David! Unable to stay put, I dashed across the room. Cassie, what you doing up, girl? asked Big Ma, swatting, at, swatting me as I passed her. But Mama, staring into the wet night, said nothing as I reached her side. Is it them? I asked. Out of the darkness, a round light appeared, moving slowly across the drive, and Mr. Morrison's voice drifted softly to us. Go on, Stacy, he said. I got him. Then Stacy, a flashlight in his hand, came into sight, followed by Mr. Morrison carrying Papa. David, Mama gasped, her voice a frightened whisper. Big Ma standing behind me stepped back, pulling me with her. She stripped the bed to its sheets and ordered, Put him right here, Mr. Morrison. As Mr. Morrison climbed the stairs, we could see that Papa's left leg stuck straight out, immobilized by a shotgun strapped to it with a rope. His head was wrapped in a rag through which the dark redness of his blood had seeped. Mr. Morrison eased Papa through the door, careful not to hit the strapped leg, and laid him gently on the bed. Mama went immediately to the bed and took Papa's hand. Hey, baby, Papa said faintly. I'm all right. Just got my leg broke, that's all. Wagon rolled over it, said Mr. Morrison, avoiding Mama's eyes. We better get that leg set. Didn't have time to on the road. But his head... Mama said, her eyes questioning Mr. Morrison. But Mr. Morrison said nothing further, and Mama turned to Stacy. You all right, son? Yes, son, Stacy said, his face strangely ashen, his eyes on Papa. Then get out of those wet things. Don't want you catching pneumonia. Casey, Cassie, you go to bed. I'll get a fire started, said Big Ma, disappearing into the kitchen, as Mama turned to the closet to find sheets for making a cast. But Stacy and I remained rooted, watching Papa and did not move until Christopher, John, and Little Man made a sleepy interest. "'What's going on?' asked Little Man, frowning into the light. "'Go back to bed, children,' Mama said, rushing to keep them from coming further into the room. But before she could reach them, Christopher, John, spied Papa on the bed and shot past her. "'Papa, you got back!' Mr. Morrison swung him upward before he could dry the bed. W "'What's the matter?' asked Christopher, John, wide awake now. Papa, what's the matter? How come you got that thing on your head? Your papa's asleep, said Mama, as Mr. Morrison set Christopher John back down. Stacy, take them to bed and get out of those clothes. None of us stirred. Move when I tell you, Mama hissed impatiently, her face more worried than angry. Stacy herded us into the boys' room. As soon as the door closed behind us, I asked Stacy, How bad Papa hurt? Stacy felt around for a lamp, lit it, then plopped wearily on the side of the bed. We huddled around him. Well, Stacy shook his head. I don't know. His legs busted up by the wagon, and he's shot. Shot? Christopher John and Little Man exclaimed fearfully, but I was silent, too afraid to speak, to think. Mr. Morrison says he don't think the bullet hurt him much. Says he thinks it just hit the skin. Here. Stacy ran his forefinger along his right temple. It didn't sink in nowhere. But who'd shoot Papa? The asking little man, greatly agitated. Can't nobody just shoot Papa? Stacy stood then and motioned Christopher, John, and little man under the covers. I've said too much already. Cassie, go on to bed. I continued to sit, my mind unable to move. Cassie, go on now, like Mama said. How'd the wagon roll over him? How he get shot? I blurted out angrily, already plotting revenge against whoever dared hurt my father. Cassie, you go on to bed. Ain't moving till you tell me. I'll call Mama, he threatened. She too busy, I said, folding my arms and feeling confident that he would tell the story. He went to the door and opened it. Christopher John, little man, and I watched him eagerly, but he soon closed the door and came back to bed. What was they doing? asked little man. Big Moss tinned in Papa's head. Well, what happened out there? I repeated. Stacy sighed despairingly and sat down. We was coming back from Vicksburg when the back wheels come off, he said, his voice a hollow whisper. It was already dark and it was raining, too. And Papa and Mr. Morrison, they thought somebody done mess with them wheels for both of them to come off at the same time like they did. Then, when I told them I'd seen two boys near the wagon when we was in Vicksburg, 
Papa said we didn't have time to unhitch and unload the wagon like we should to put them wheels back on. He thought somebody was coming after us. So after we found the wheels and the bolts, Papa told me to hold the reins real tight on Jack to keep him still. Jack, he was real skittish because of the storm. Then Mr. Morrison went and lifted that wagon all by himself. And it was heavy, too, but Mr. Morrison lifted it like it wasn't nothing. Then Papa slipped the first wheel on. That's when he got shot. But who? I started. A truck come up the road and stopped behind us while he was trying to get that wheel on. But didn't none of us hear it coming because of the rain and the thunder and all. And they didn't put their lights on till the truck stopped. Anyway, there was three men in that truck, and soon as Papa seen him, he reached for his shotgun. That's when they shot him, and he fell back with his left leg under the wagon. Then Jack reared up, scared by the shot, and I couldn't hold him. And the wagon rolled over Papa's leg. His voice cracked sharply, and he exploded guiltily. It's but my fault his legs busted. I thought on what he had said, and laying my hand on his shoulder, I said, No, it ain't. It's them men's. Stacy did not speak for a while, and I did not prod him to go on. Finally, he cleared his throat and continued huskily. As soon as I could, I, I tied Jack to a tree and run back to Papa, but Papa told me not to move him and to get down in the gully. After them men shot Papa, they come down trying to get Mr. Morrison, but he was too fast and strong for him. I couldn't see everything that happened because they didn't always stay in front of them headlights, but I did see Mr. Morrison pick up one of them men like he wasn't nothing but a sack of chicken feathers and fling him down on the ground so hard it must have broke his back. He never seen nothing like it before in my whole life. Then one of them other two that had a shotgun at Mr. Morrison, but he didn't hit him. Mr. Morrison, he ducked away from the headlights into the darkness, and they went after him. Couldn't see nothing then, he said, glancing toward the door where Papa lay. Heard bones cracking, heard somebody cursing and crying. Then I couldn't hear nothing but the rain, and I was real scared. Afraid they'd killed Mr. Morrison. But they didn't, reminded little man, his eyes bright with excitement. Stacy nodded. Next thing I see was a man coming real slow like into the headlights and pick up the man lying in the middle of the road, the one Mr. Morrison thrown down. He got him into the truck, then come back and help the other one. That one looked like he had a broke arm. It was hanging all crazy like at his side. Then they turned the truck around and drove away. Then what? little man inquired. Stacy shrugged. Nothing. We put on the other wheel and come on home. Who was it? I rasped, holding my breath. Stacy looked at me and said flatly, The Wallaces, I think. There was a fearful moment, silence. Then Christopher John, tears in his eyes, asked, Stacy, is Papa gonna die? No, of course not, denied Stacy too quickly. But he was so still. I don't want Papa to die, wailed little man. He was just sleeping, like Mom said, that's all. Well, when he gonna wake up, cried Christopher John, the tears escaping down his plump cheeks. And... In the morning, said Stacy, putting a comforting arm around both Christopher John and Little Man. Just you wait and see. He'll be fine just come morning. Stacy, still in his wet, muddy clothes, said nothing else, and neither did the rest of us. All the questions had been answered, yet we feared, and we sat silently listening to the rain, soft now upon the roof, and watched the door behind which Papa lay and wished for morning. All right. You are going to write your genre-based thinking job in the form like normal, but first I want you guys to write it in this blank sheet of paper. So on your book, you're going to write C S C R T on this page, on page 217, and you're going to fill all the things out. Then you will have it ready to look at to put in the form. After you do that, you will come back and read a couple more pages.